by doing no analysis at all, which is your specialty, right? Mm -hmm. Who's better, white or black? White. White. Why? I'm not sure I didn't analyze. Yeah, good answer. What do you like about white's position that's better than black's position? For example, I could show you a position where white is up a queen, and without analyzing, you would say, I like white because he's up a queen. So why do you like white? Pawns are more advanced, pawns are more connected, less pawn islands. Pawns are more advanced, I don't necessarily agree with. Yeah. I don't, I don't think white's pawns are more advanced. White's got three pawns on the third, and black has three pawns on the third and one on the fourth. What was the other stuff you said so I can denote that also? What? Uh, less pawn islands for white. Less pawn islands, I agree. White has two pawn islands and black has three. I agree. What else? I prefer my rook. My rook is active and your rook's on the first rank. Mm -hmm. Because of the more pawn islands, you have a very weak isolated pawn. Now also, it's white's move because black just played this. So that means when we move our kings up the board, as you were taught, whites goes first. So I could get my king to d4. Yeah. Okay, so he played king e2. Shocking. Yeah. Yeah. Look at move their kings up, unlike all of my students. <laughs> yeah. Shocking. Okay, rook attacking the pawn. He defended it. Moved his king up. Okay, now black can't do a whole lot. Black doesn't really have a plan. Black's waiting for white. But black's pretty solid. Okay, he played f5, so he's like chilling. b4. I guess if white could cheat and make two more moves in a row, that would win a pawn, because this is pinned. So he attacked the pawn. Now we can vote. You can vote for you take that pawn and they take this pawn, or you can vote for defend the pawn. Those are the things you can vote for. I vote defend. 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 Unanimous? Yeah, so he defended. Yeah, because that's that would be a terrible trade for white. Black's rook is active, past C pawn. Yeah. So he played A3. Now, if I had the black pieces, it would be very hard to stop me from playing rook B6. And the engine says rook B6 and rook E8 are about the same. But I I I can't play rook A8. I can't. You can't make me do it. I'll, I'll leave. I'll go home. But he played rook a8, so I would play rook b6. Computer doesn't like rook b6 because the rook still can't move, and here the rook can move. So actually, after rook b6, you get in zugzwang quicker because you can't move. Here you don't get in zugzwang because you can move your rook back and forth. So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's why he's famous and I'm some guy sitting at a table which I clean myself. Didn't do a good job either. Yeah. Okay, so e4 finally doing something giving black another isolated pawn. Who would have thunk it? So they trade everything. Now black has two isolated pawns. Now, this is called opening up a second front. I'm sure you kids do that a lot. You probe for weaknesses on one side, then you go to the other side. I do that. No lying in my class. Okay, so one of the games I did that, because I don't do it very often, because usually I'm down five pieces by now, was against Sam Shanklin in the U.S. Championship circa 2007. I'm within a year. It was either 6, 7, or 8, so I'll say 2007. It was in Tulsa. I had a queen for a rook and a piece, and I moved my king to the queen's side, then the king's side, then the queen's side, then the king's side, and then I won. Okay, so that's what white's going to do. White's like, I'm going to attack this pawn, and while you're defending it, I'm going to go attack those pawns. Okay, and I'm going to attack all four pawns, because you have more pawn islands than I do. Also, my king's on the fourth rank, and your king's on the third rank. And then black was like, thanks for that chess lesson, but no talking during the game. <laughs> okay. So, rook a7, now the rook defends everything. King f4, h6. Preventing the infiltration, h4, and h5. And now, well, obviously, if you take, you can't, you can't save your pawn because your rook is saving this pawn. So he played g5, and now we have another infiltration square, king f5, which black is preventing. And black can't really do very much, so he didn't do very much, right? He's moving his rook back and forth. Maybe my rook b6 was silly because I don't have any moves then. Hmm. 
Okay, king d4, what does white want to play? King c5. And black's like, no. And he's like, wait, how about f5? And he's like, no. And he's like, okay, how about I check you? Now, whichever way you go, I'll go the other way. And black's like, no, you won't. You're crazy. And he's like, okay, I'll go here. So now he cut the king off. It didn't matter where black went. White was going to go one way or the other, and black's king can't cross. Mm. So he took his rook that was here, he put it there, and now he can attack the pawns from behind. And he can cut the king off. What about this king and pawn ending? Rook e7 check. Not looking good for black. Not looking good. No, that's the worst end game ever. Yeah. Rawr. Now every move wins. All legal moves win. I don't know if king g4 wins. Probably king g4 doesn't win. The computer might announce mate here. That's really good for white. Man, pretty good when you're equal material and plus 52. I'll do 23. Yeah, that's going to announce mate eventually. Yeah, because it's going to see that you queen and then it'll find the mate. Yeah. But it's more than depth 37. Wow. Okay, so obviously that king of pawn is no good, so he didn't do that. He played c5. So what I tell my students, so far, We've been talking about how great white is. He has a better king. He has fewer pawn islands. He has a better rook. Okay, but black gets to play chess too. And what black wants to do is trade all the pawns. And then when it's rook against rook, you agree to a draw. Okay, and also, don't kick. And also, black wants to trade off isolated pawns for sure. Okay, he checks them. He's like, I have an idea. Why don't you go here and I can check and take that pawn? It's a good idea. And black's like, okay. The problem is, if you go the other way, you just lose your pawn for nothing. And if you go to e7, white has a really nice move here. Let's see which one of my fine students can find it. Let's call on a random student, Archer. Um, rook h8. Rook h8, very good. Man, that's a hard move to stop. I, I give up. Anybody? Just get off the seventh rank. Yeah. You have a suggestion? <sighs> Nothing beautiful. You're, you're the eighth pawn is falling. With check. And then you go back to the seventh rank. Man, the oh. truth hurts. Yeah, so he didn't like that. So rook d8 check was a pretty nice move. So he played king c6, obviously check. And he took. Now white's a pawn up and better, because his king is much better. Rook h7, boo! You couldn't pay me to play that move. And then he resigned. Does it announce mate? No. It just gives some crazy numbers. Plus six, plus seven. You can't defend your H pawn. Because if you play rook H7, I just go take it. And you can't go here and take my pawn because this takes a pawn and defends that pawn. Man, chess is hard. So that was a very famous end game because it was sort of boring, equal material, and white won easily. Yeah, I have a question about... Right I have an thoughts. answer about yeah, what? Yeah, the rook b6 part. Rook b6? Yeah, I want to hear rook. your thought process. Ah, 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 okay. So, as a grandmaster, I can't play moves like rook a8 because yes. I want to kill myself. You I can't, can't play which one? I can't play rook... He played rook a8. Yes. Yeah, I can't do that. Yes. That's the worst. I, I mean, even if it's the best move, I can't do it. Okay. Oh, 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 rook a8. I can't put my... I See, if I was black, I would yeah. go here. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> see? So generally, way before this, before I showed you the position, a grandmaster would be like, nope, I ain't playing this position. So way before this happens, they don't get these structures because they know this is going to happen. So I, it's hard to show you games from the last five years because sure. if Kramnik's black, him will oh, rook eight and I'll draw this position. He knows he's going to lose. So even before this happens, a grandmaster is like, I'm not going to have this rook against this rook. That's horrible. Right. And back then, they might have thought, I'll draw, it's equal pawns. Mm -hmm. And then we saw these games, and we're like, yeah, you ain't going to draw this. So, so at the top level, we do everything we can to avoid this. Yeah. And rook a8, I know I'm going to lose eventually. Rook b6, maybe I'll play c5 and get my rook out. Maybe. Yeah, that's my question. Like, yeah. What do you think if you play rook b6? The problem with rook b6 is, is, is that kind of if, if, if the problem is if black has to move here, I don't yeah. have any suggestions. See, if black has to move here, he's going back and forth. Here, the rook can't move back and forth. Yes. 
So I can't move any of these any of these things. And if I move my king, he's coming in. So that's why he didn't do it. He wanted to play rook a7, rook a8, and draw that way, which yeah, didn't yeah. work because white played e4.